We've got an absolutely fantastic day lined up for you here in the main arena. And we're really showcasing the huge breadth of activities that people take part in with their dogs. Now, Richard, we're starting with the heel work to music. Yesterday, we saw Nikki Hinson triumph in the freestyle. She's back again, isn't she? Could she do the double? She can. And uh, it's a nice little dog, that. So it would be very interesting to see whether yesterday uh, had an effect on the dog. We've actually got three handlers today in the ring that have previously won this final. So it's going to be a hot contest. And this is a really technical discipline, isn't it? It, it is. It's derived from obedience. But unlike obedience, where there's just the left hand heel, we do have those eight heel work positions. So you're going to hopefully talk us through some of those and explain what we're actually looking at, aren't you? Yes, you will see many of them in these routines. They are up to four minutes long. So that gives the uh, handlers an opportunity to showcase these moves in different directions and at different speeds. Are we still going to see the costumes that we saw yesterday? Yes, it's just the same. You've got to really uh, portray your piece of music and there will be some freestyle in them, but mustn't be too much freestyle. And what about the props? There might be some props, but probably not quite as many as in the freestyle. Brilliant. I think I can't wait for it to get started. So I think it's time for us to have a quick look at just some of the highlights of yesterday's competition. That was the utility and uh, toy day here at Crufts 2020. And now we're going to show you some of the highlights from yesterday's freestyle heel work to music competition. The best we've got is a reserve. I think we may have had a win as well. We've actually had some great deal of success. And there is a telephone number up there, and I will ask the crew if at the end of the competition we can replay that, that last part so that you can have a look at the telephone number if you would like to help and support the team. So uh, please bear that in mind uh, as you dug it in a little bit later. I'll ask the team if they will play it back to you. Anyway, we've got the finals. The finals in nature of Betty Opney went to music. Yesterday we had freestyle, it was really exciting. We had some fabulous routines. And as you know, the overall name is Hillwork to Music and freestyle is one section and Hillwork to Music is the other. We've got the Hillwork to Music up and coming. But have a look at this video of what went on yesterday. Highlights there of yesterday's freestyle final. It really was a wonderful event, wasn't it, Richard? It was, and uh, you just saw there in that little VT, 
Freckle, who we're going to see again today. I think Freckle stole our hearts a little bit, didn't oh, she? Yes. <laughs> so we're going to welcome our three judges for the Heel Work to Music final. They're the same as yesterday. So we've got Dawn Hill, Pamela Rusco and Karen Hardman. Now, these are really experienced judges, aren't they, Richard? Yes, they have a wealth of experience between them. Pamela judges a lot in the UK. Kath has uh, judged worldwide and she's head judge so any decisions she's the person to make them and then Dawn Hill is our overseas judge from Belgium and they're going to be judging on the same criteria as yes yesterday aren't they that's right we have the three areas uh, content uh, accuracy in team performance and musical interpretation and uh, they will each be scored out of 10 points. So if you're new to Hillwork to Music, it can be a little bit confusing, but we're going to talk people through it, aren't we, and make it as simple to understand as we can. That's right. So we have a So as Richard said, we've got quite a few previous winners here and previous finalists, haven't we? So it really is the, the very best of the best heel up to music performers. It is, and two of the dogs uh, that were actually working have previously won the finals here. Um, and so obviously we've also got Elsa who won yesterday. She might be going for the triple because uh, there's obviously the international final tomorrow as well, which she'll be in. Fantastic. So our first competitor is going to be heading into the ring in just a moment. Here we have Kathy Bates with Twinkle, the Border Collie. This is a two-year-old bitch, and they're going to be performing a beautiful song, A Dreamed a Dream, from Les Mis. Last year was Twinkle's first experience in the main arena, and she really took it in her stride, so ready to go again today. Oh 
Give a big round of applause. What a great routine. Happy bass and twinkle there. Such a beautiful, emotive piece of music. But Richard, was that a dream? Well, it was a very nice performance with some nice emotional music, which Cathy does very well. She's a very smooth mover. And there was a lovely range of the heel work positions that I was mentioning earlier. And a nice smoothness to the routine, which is uh, what you're looking for. Cause obviously, the routines have got to flow nicely from one position into the next. And the handlers aren't allowed to have any treats, are they? Is that or are they? No, they're not allowed any treats or toys in the ring. And uh, the dogs here, unlike in the obedience ring, where you'll see the handlers holding their hand on their hip, the dogs here have to work without the hand being held close to them. You can see here with Twinkle, she's having to hold the position. She's using what we call a shoulder target or a head target to stay in that position. And that has to be taught. And uh, over many months, the dog has to be built up in its confidence to remain there, even though the hands aren't there to help. Now, they've taken part in Team GB, haven't they, this, this duo? So quite they experienced. Have, and they are experienced. They are actually uh, also selected this year to complete at the World Championships in June. So our judges just finishing up with their scoring. As we said, we've got three different areas and three different judges. So uh, nine points in total for us to get an average of. great solid start to the competition I think it was and uh, here we come with the scores and a, a good eight to start always a nice start there with the content accuracy a little bit down and the, the dog there was perhaps not quite a straight in position and then interpretation you would expect to be fairly good there so 8.3 8.4 not too bad and deductions are made if the dog makes a noise, aren't they? That's right. Up to four points if the uh, dog made a noise. 24.13. That's a good score to kick off the competition. And really graceful pairing here. They really did listen to that music and respond to it, didn't they? They did. So our second performer coming into the ring here, this is Michelle Dodson with Devon, another Border Collie. This is a dog, and they are going to be performing to Lost Boy. This is their fifth time together in the finals here at Crufts. There was a time when I was alone Nowhere to go and no place to call my only friend was the man in the moon And even sometimes he would go away too Then one night as I closed my eyes I saw a shadow flying high He came to me with the sweetest smile Told me he wanted to talk for a while He said, Peter Pan, that's what they call me I promise that I'll never be lonely and ever since that day I am a lost boy from Neverland Usually hanging out with Peter Pan And when we're bored we play in the woods Always on the run from Captain Hook and told me to believe, believe in him and believe in me. Together we will fly away in a cloud of green to your beautiful destiny. As we soared above the town that never loved me, I realized I finally had a family. Soon enough we reach Neverland, peacefully my feet hit the sand and air. on 
so you are not my home sweet home forever a lost boy at last and for always I Michelle well, Donaldson Michelle. and Devon there, performing to a song from Peter Pan. Richard, will they have hooked themselves a good score? Well, I think Devon was finding it a little bit warm out there today. And uh, they're an experienced team, and you can see that the dog was holding some nice positions there. Perhaps could have used the ring a little bit more, because uh, the judges will be looking and taking that into account, a uh, good use of the ring. And uh, some of the cues there that the dog was being given, you'll see will be cleverly disguised in the movements of the handler um, that uh, is choreographed with the music. Michelle seems to be using her voice quite a lot there. Is that common as a, a way of controlling the dog? It all depends on, on your dog. Some dogs need more motivation than others and so you have to give them a bit more vocal encouragement and uh, so it really just comes down to the dog and sometimes when you get out there the music's loud and uh, the dog just needs a little bit more help perhaps than it normally would. So we're just waiting now for our judges to score Michelle and Devon. Ten competitors in total in this final of the Heel Work to Music competition. It looks like we have our score. So at the moment we've got uh, Kathy Bates on 24.13, so we're looking for a score to beat that. So, accuracy quite good from two judges there. Quite consistent so far. So some eights and sevens. Any uh, deductions for noise? We'll see if the judges could hear. When it's noise, it could be just dog mumbling. Uh, but 23.40, oh, so into second place. So Michelle describes Devon as earnest, loyal, loving, but a little bit needy. Oh. <laughs> so next in the ring, we have Christina Oxby and Shah. This is a dog, eight years old, and they're going to be performing to Fever by Michael Bublé. Shy is a rescue border collie, and this is his first time in the big ring here at Crufts. Never know how much I love you Never know how much I care When you put your arms around me I get a fever that's so hard to bear You give me fever When you kiss me Fever when you hold me tight Fever In the morning Fever all through the night Sun lights up the daytime, moon lights up the night. I light up when you call my name, and you know I'm gonna treat you right. You give me fever when you kiss me, fever when you hold me tight. Fever in the morning, fever all through the night. Everybody's Got the fever, that is something you won't know Fever isn't such a new thing Fever started long ago Put his arms around her He said, Julie, baby, you're 
my flame thou givest fever When we kiss it Fever with thy flame in you Fever I'm a fire fever Yeah, I burn for soothe Captain Smith and Pocahontas With his kisses, fever when he holds me tight. Fever, I'm a his missus. Daddy, won't you treat him right? Go! story here's the point that i have made chicks were born to give you fever be it fahrenheit or centigrade they give you fever when you kiss them fever if you live and learn fever till you sizzle what a lovely way to burn Christina Oxterby and Shay there. Now, Shay is a rescue collie, her first time in the big ring, and her tail never stopped wagging, did it, Richard? No, he's a lovely dog, super attitude, really was enjoying his time out there for a first performance. She must be over the moon with that attitude in this such a change of environment, even from a normal show. Christina's a music teacher, so she's got the musical interpretation side and the musicality sewn up there, uh, obviously being aware of the music. And uh, Shay really tried hard for her there. You can see the concentration on Christina's face. Uh, one of the things I often tell my pupils is, you've got to put that smile on your face all, all the time, even though you're concentrating. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very nerve-wracking being out there. There's a lot to uh, think about. So Christina herself has competed twice in the freestyle finals, but she says this is her first time in the heel work. So how will she be feeling different about this? Well, she has had a little bit of a time off. Uh, her last canine partner unfortunately passed away, and you build such a bond with these dogs. It's yeah. Sometimes it can be hard to get back into it. And uh, Shay uh, has sort of brought her back into the sport in the last six months, and she's delighted to get a qualifier and then get here today. So she must be over the moon with him to uh, bring him into this environment him, him perform with such energy and drive. It looks like we've got a score here. Is this going to be a new leader? So we're looking to beat 24.13, starting off with a couple of sevens and an 8.2 for content. Accuracies, seven. Oh, <laughs> bit of a change there. <laughs> yes. So each judge will have their own ideas, although they're judging to the rules. Possibly a little bit too low to be a lead, I think. We'll have to wait and see what the average is. And it's 23 dead into third place. So Kathy Bates and Twinkle retain the lead at the moment. But Christina must be over the moon with the way that dog has worked. And she can build on that next uh, to come back next year and do an even more powerful performance. So here we have our next competitor. Now this is Anne Shuka and Freckle. They came second yesterday in freestyle. So Freckle is a Crosby Brie Brit. She's eight years old. And they're going to be performing to Confrontation from Jekyll and Hyde, described as a lovely, joyful little dog who can be a little bit overexcitable. 
She had performed to confrontation by the cast of Jekyll and Hyde. Anne Shuka and her crossbreed rescue brethel there. I really felt the two sides of that performance, the Jekyll and the Hyde, Richard. How was it technically? It was very nice there. Uh, spe specifically the cross the back position that you'll see the dogs holding. That is one of probably the harder positions because obviously you can't see the dog. And Freckle did a lovely piece where the dog was across the back of the handle coming in and the dog has to be very what we call back end aware, has to use its back end. And, and you're seeing now the dog backing on the left side and that again requires the dog to be very back end aware. Freckle, she's like a little sort of spring. Or you think she's going to go at any moment. And uh, so full of energy. And that's a real good thing in a heel work dog because you've got to be able to watch these dogs and see that animation in them. 
Anne says that she's constantly on the go at home and she's just so proud to have got her here into the main ring at Crufts. And we're actually going to see some more rescue dogs later, just around 1.30 in the agility competition. So really showing what these dogs are capable of with a loving home and encouragement. That's certainly right. And lots of positive training we do with these dogs. We use lots of uh, rewards, food rewards and toys. And you can see that in the way these dogs are performing. Their tails are wagging, their eyes and ears are alert. And that is the key thing when you're working with the dog. You want that dog to enjoy it. And specifically when we're coming into this ring for um, a routine, we, we want to convey to the audience the joy that we have working with these dogs. That looked like a solid performance to me. Do you think we're going to have a new leader here? I'm not sure yet. We'll have to see how the judges interpret it. Oh, starting quite good there Ooh. with an 8.4 for a content and another 8.2 from Dawn Hill. Accuracy, a little bit in the sevens there and a low 8.2. And uh, for the interpretation, 8.2, 8.7, 8 8.6. So that was a good score for the uh, musical interpretation. Didn't see or hear any uh, noise there. Ah, oh. so she's gone into the lead. Yes, yeah, just sneaked into the lead there on 24.53. So Anne and Freckle were second in freestyle yesterday, currently in the lead here in the Hillworks Music Final. So our next competitor, another one who we saw yesterday, here's Lucy Heath. She's competing with Border Collie Indy today. This is a 12-year-old bitch, and they're performing to the Grease Mega Mix, so they're hoping to get the crowd dancing and clapping. So, Richard, are you ready? Yes, we're all you ready got, to go. Got chills? They're multiplying? <laughs> <laughs> and she's performing the Grease Mega Mix.
see here you've done Indy her border collie there. Now the crowd absolutely love that. I love that, but I think I might have heard a bark, Richard. Well, I don't think we want to distract from the fact that that was superb musical interpretation. Really nice. Uh, Lucy brought it to life with some of those classic grease moves she was doing, but it didn't detract from Indy. She was holding some nice positions there. Yes, she may have made a little bit of noise, but perhaps the accuracy, the music interpretation and the content might actually bring her sort of up, I even so. though you know, she might get a little bit of marks there. But, you know, for this dog to be uh, one of the older dogs in this uh, final, you can still see the enjoyment. And these two have been a real team. They've done well here in the past. And you can see really the enjoyment they both get at working together. I absolutely love that. And they really use the whole ring, which is important, isn't it? That's right. The judges are looking at ring use. And, uh, you know, one of the nice features was when uh, the dog uh, spoke to her in her ear and the lyrics sort of said oh. the same thing. And the classic pour over the face just got that R from the audience. And uh, the audience really sort of clapped well after that routine. And that's what you want to do, engage your audience. Let's hope she's engaged the judges. So starting off with some reasonable start, yeah. uh, content marks there. Accuracy, 8.2 from Pamela and an 8 from Kath. 7.9 from uh, Dawn. But still fairly high there. Musical interpretation, I would imagine to Brilliant. be fairly good. And a 9.5 wow. from Kath Hardman. She Real really liked there. that. Yes. And an 8.7. That's looking good. So let's keep our fingers oh, crossed. Those deductions. So. Oh, oh 1.5. Um, Nought. Oh, well. oh. <laughs> We've got a difference in here. And mates. a 0.2. Yeah. Wow. Oh, so 24.73. Well, well done, Lucy. I'm and delighted. Indy. Lucy says Indy is the coolest dog to live with and her best friends for so many years. They love to go out and running, swimming, fetching, training and working. And it shows uh, Lucy's versatility as a trainer. A little trip yesterday, the tiny dog, and now aboard a collie in yeah. the heel work. I'm delighted for them. So here we have yesterday's winner of the freestyle competition. This is Nikki Hinson with Elsa, Border Collie. This is a three-year-old bitch, and they're going to be dancing to a song I love, Another Day in the Sun from the musical La La Land. Now, Elsa is a crazy little pocket rocket, according to Nikki, so let's see how they get on today. Small town kid will come 
and Elsa, they're on top form, aren't they, Richard? They are. That was a very polished performance there and lovely music. It was lovely light music and it really suited that dog. She's light on her feet and Nikki moving around nicely just had that feeling of joy and lightness that that music had and some polished uh, positions there as well. Uh, you can see there as she's moving into the dog, dog's got to be aware of that and start moving away from the handler. And uh, it was just, again, another good showcase. And I have my money on this uh, team in future years doing the triple here at Crufts, winning all three finals. Bit of a non-technical question. But why haven't they got shoes on? Because Lucy didn't have shoes on either. It's, it's funny it's that some people will move better. And, and one, when I'm teaching, I say to people, don't do this routine with your shoes on because it makes your foot much more rigid so when you haven't got yeah. shoes on your foot is much more flexible and it has more uh, you can um, bend and you can get that bounce in a routine sometimes well, Nikki needs a lot of bounce to keep up with Elsa because she is a quick dog isn't she she is and she certainly has some energy she was obviously here yesterday she did two performances and this dog is still got loads of energy and raring to go and that's a sign of a dog being trained in a really positive way and having a joyous time. And this is another duo that have been in Team GB, isn't it? They are, and they will be uh, this year in the World Championships as well, representing uh, GB in uh, both divisions. And uh, they really are a, a team for the future, with Elsa only still being uh, three years old. So, the score to beat, Lucy Heath is on 24.73. What do you reckon? Ah, it's, it, it's close one. I'm not yeah. going to call it. We're going to see because these judges, they, they've got their own views. <laughs> so, uh, but starting off fairly well there with the content of 8.3. And an 8.1 from Dawn. Accuracy and something that may have affected the accuracy there is the, the hand signals. If you notice, the handler sometimes had her hands down nearer to the yes, dog. Yes, they did, yeah. And uh, some of the judges will sort of have a little bit of a penalisation of the marks for that. And But a 9.2 for interpretation, and I expected those musical interpretation marks to be fairly high, and they are there. So a final score, 24.30 oh. into third, third place. Now we've got a top four at the moment, all on 24 point something. So you can see how close this is. And we've got another four dogs yet to go. Nikki and Elsa there. Nikki says she's her soulmate and couldn't love her anymore. And next competitor heading into the ring here is Lucy Creek. And this is Skiffle. So we've got another Border Collie. 
dog who's 10 years old. Now, they are going to be dancing to Mission Impossible. And Richard reliably informs me that it's a kind of upbeat remix, so very fast pace. Let's see how they get on. Morning, Mr. Hammond. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, involves recovery of a stolen item designated Chimera. You have 48 hours to recruit Miss Nordor Hall and meet me in Seville to receive your assignment. As always, should you or any member of your IM force be caught and killed, the Secretary will disavow all knowledge of your actions. This message will self-destruct in five seconds. There we go. What an incredible performance. Lucy Creek and Skiffle, they have won 10 Crofts finals. Could this be the 11th? Well, that was a very polished performance and Skiffle is just an amazing dog. He is so responsive. If you were watching, she wasn't giving any physical signal to that dog. The merest little command, boom, that dog did it. And that's why this dog is so good. He is so biddable. He tries his best for Lucy. They are such a team. He's one of those dogs. It's a one in a million dog. You're not going to get another one like this, I tell you. And uh, what was so lovely about that was showcasing a different style of routine. That's told us a bit of a story this time. Whereas a lot of Heel Rex music routines are perhaps a more fluid routine 
without the story that we saw yesterday with the freestyle. Yeah, this one felt closer to freestyle to me than the others. Yes, and they're allowed to have freestyle elements. And it was nice to have that variety. You've got to stand out from the crowd when you're in that ring. So it was a nice little story with the laser lines there and the way the dog jumped over and then let Lucy through. And that's what you're trying to do. It's almost like a silent movie you're trying to portray to the audience and the judges. So it looks like we're going to get our scores here. High scores. I'm expecting that to uh, perhaps sneak into the lead. I'm going to put my neck on the line now. Ah. Oh, look yes. at that to start. A 9 and a 9.3 and a 9 for content. This wow. is looking good. And uh, 9.28.5 and another 8.9. Music interpretation looks like wow. everybody's going to be in the 9s. A 9.7 from Kath Hardman. Any noise deduction? Well, I'm not... Uh, I don't think there was anything there, no. Ah, uh, 27.2, oh, look at that. Into the lead. What I love about this pair is that uh, Lucy says Skiffle has retired from freestyle, but wasn't ready for full retirement, so they're going to carry on a little bit longer. Yes, and he was well capable of performing today. And look at that adoringly look up in to Lucy. He's on the ball all of the time. He might be 10 years old, but he is uh, still bright as a button. Absolutely loving that performance. So our next competitor in the ring, Carol Dodson and Border Collie Legend. This is a dog. They're performing to Dream Chasers from Future World Music. It's their second time in the Crufts Finals and they say that he's a pleasure to work with.
Dodson and Legend, her border collie there, performing to Dream Chasers. Was it a dream, Richard? Well, you could, what was nice there was showcasing a different style again. You know, the last the two dogs, we've had totally different styles, and this is different again. You know, slightly slower music, um, but the dog's still capable of doing all these heel work positions. Um, and uh, Carol is an obedience handler as well, and you could see there with the way the dog was moving. And uh, what uh, was so nice again is that whole attitude of the dog. Um, you'll see sometimes when the dog's doing a, a, a freestyle move in a heel work position, some people think, does that qualify as heel work? But actually it doesn't. The dog must be um, in the heel work position, as you're seeing many of the times here. And if it does do a, a freestyle move, that won't be counted as uh, heel work. So Carol says that Legend is a pleasure to work, but he also really likes his sleep and doesn't like to be disturbed. So I'm sure he deserves a good nap after that, doesn't he? Yes, <laughs> yes. And of course, Carol was in the freestyle final yesterday with a different dog. And uh, in uh, previous years, she's uh, won this final as well. So uh, experienced handler with a, a younger dog, only a second time into this arena. Some lovely trotting from that dog, really showcasing that lovely gait of the dog. So here are our results. 27.2 is the score to beat. Starting with an 8.2 and a 7.2 and an 8. So not too bad to start, but obviously having just seen a All very high-scoring yes. dog, uh, you, you can obviously see we're, we're uh, not going to be uh, right at the top, but... Uh, an 8.5 and 6.8, 8.2 for interpretation. That's going to take the scores down a little bit. So 23 dead. And that goes into seventh place. So Carol Dodson and Legend, only his second time here at Crufts, so I'm sure we'll be seeing more of him in Hillwork to Music Finals in the future. So it's time now, our penultimate handler. This is Caroline Garrett. Her border collie is called Forks, and he's another slightly older dog, 10 years old. And they're performing to a Latin-inspired piece by the City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra. They're up in the southeast today.
What a beautiful routine. What yeah. great beauty. And the Border Collie. Now, they have won this final twice before, haven't they? So is it going to be third time lucky? Well, that was a lovely, precise, sophisticated routine. And Caroline is such an excellent handler, calm, quiet, with this very high-drive dog. You can see he's very eager to get on with it. But this uh, piece of music, it suited her calm and quiet manner. She flowed very nicely around the ring there. So while we're on the subject, one of our Ask Crufts questions for you, so people are sharing these using the hashtag Ask Crufts, is how do you choose your music and are there any restrictions on that? There's many things we take into account when choosing music and I always think Hilwert's music music rather than freestyle music is harder to find because Hilwert's music you've got to show off some of these heel work positions so you want like long circles sometimes and then short bits and the music should tell you when to change into another heel work position and uh, also, the music's got to suit the dog. Elsa, earlier with uh, Nikki, light, light music was a light little dog. That wouldn't have suited well with this dog. He's slightly bigger and heavier. And uh, so that light music really suited that team. So it looks like we're just about to get our results in. Score to beat so far, 27.2. I think this well could be up there. Oh, and we're starting start. already with some nines. Audience like that. And some accuracy. Oh, I knew wow. that was going to be I said that wow. time. So <laughs> accuracy, 9.7 from Kath. And interpretation, 9.8 from uh, interpretation from Kath as well. Think. This is looking quite good. Uh, nines, you know, across the board. You, you've got to be pleased with that. And oh. uh, hopefully no deductions for noise. Yes, 28. 28. I think so, that Caroline. really was a lovely showcase of what Heelworks music is was about uh, such a polished performance from that team they also work the top class in obedience as well and that really showed there so caroline and forks live in the south downs and when they're not doing here what to music they enjoy dancing and swimming <laughs> so our final competitor pamela sullivan this is mackie a crossbreed he's six years old and they are going to be performing too now bear with me and i can only apologize malaguena vet grupo ilias duvan don't ask me to say that again
Pamela Sullivan and Mackie, her golden retriever, German Shepherd, cross there. How did they get on with that flamenco-inspired routine? Well, it was a nice, sort of solid performance there from this team. And notice how that music was, had that sort of heavier feel to it. And, of course, Mackie being, you know, golden retriever cross, it has that heaviness to it as well. So that's one of the things we're looking for when we're choosing that music. And, of course, Pamela is very much the performer there. She had that smile on her face and you could see her saying to the dog occasionally encouraging him along and that's what I love to see in a good handler. Now they also compete in Class C obedience which is the top level of obedience. Does that help in this discipline? It really does in heel work to music although in uh, conventional obedience you only have one position it's the same sort of thing in teaching the other positions. You've got to be a bit OCD about heel work. You've got to be getting the dog really precise in these positions and the difference as I said earlier is in these uh, heel work to music routines the dog won't necessarily have a hand there close to it to help it and you can see the skirtography of uh, Pamela here <laughs> I like that. Um, <laughs> that uh, she had her arms out and so the dog shouldn't be sort of looking at those uh, hands holding the skirt and Mackie didn't he looked up at uh, Pamela all the time so tense moment here for our competitors at the moment we've got Lucy Creek and Skiffle in the lead on 28 will our final Sorry, we've got Caroline Garrett in the lead. Excuse me. Oh, the excitement's getting it to is you getting now, to me. I'm Laura. So excited. Gosh, <laughs> well, it's starting off with a 9.2, 7.5 from Kath Hardman. And uh, interpretation should be fairly well up, I would think. Yes, 9.3, 9.1, and uh, an 8.3 from Dawn Hill. But it's not going to be enough, is it, to take Caroline it's off the top? It's not going to be, but uh, I think that I thought they might get Score. into the top three yeah. there. So 25.23 sneaks into third place, which is a not a bad achievement in this company, I can tell you. Very respectable. And he was having a great time, wasn't he? Look at him, Mackie. He really Constantly enjoys it wagging. out there. Yeah. And that's uh, through many years of confidence building from Pamela. She's taken the time to build this dog's mm -hmm. energy and drive up and his want to work. And you can see he wants to be out there and he's quite the showman, is Mackie. So all of these dogs have done incredibly well, even just to get here, haven't they? I think we just need to really emphasise that. This is the best of the best. They have had quite a journey to get here. They have to start off qualifying through novice, intermediate, into advanced. They have to then go to a qualifier show where they have to get one of the two uh, tickets to get to the semi-finals. And then they've got to be in the top ten there. So I think, are we going to have a presentation for our winners here? As you can see, our winner there was Caroline Garrett with 28. Her dog Forks, they're a Border Collie, 10 years old, and this was their 11th final, I think, was it? Is that right? I'm not sure how they've many finals won before, they've done, but they? this is yes. certainly possibly the third time they've won they've this won final. They've won twice, that's right. And yes. uh, then we've got Lucy Creek with uh, Skiffle, who, yes, he he has done very well in uh, not only here at Music, but freestyle right. as well. Right, on the screen up there, you'll see the... And the then Pamela and Mackie, who we just saw there in third. And the rest of our competitors, but as we said, all done really well, even just to make it here to these finals today. That's right, and Nikki and Elsa, who are, were our winners yesterday, coming in at six, but it's only a young dog, and I, I predict good things for that young dog to come in the future. Definitely. Please get in touch with Kath Hardman. He's all volunteer, nobody gets paid a penny, but it's an expensive job coming over to Europe. But it might get more expensive, of course, when we're not going to be members of Europe anymore. anymore. But this year, of course, we still are. So if you'd like to make a note of that telephone number, it would be good. And that's to help support Team GB. So we've got one of our Ask Crufts questions here. People can ask these using the hashtag on any of our social media channels. So how have the rules of Heel Work to Music changed during the years that the competition's been here at Crufts? Well, when the, the actual competition started, Heel Work to Music started in the UK, there were very few rules and the Kennel Club let it develop rather than putting lots of rules in to start with. And so now there is many rules that uh, you need to be aware of and they can be all found on the Kennel Club website. 
And some of the different positions have changed, so they, they've they removed the, some band positions now, or moves, There's, is there? There are a few what we call band moves, yep. uh, and that's just really within the health and safety of the dog. And uh, in the early days of what we've just seen there, Hewitt Music, there wasn't any official positions. But many years ago, uh, we as a working party, I'm a member of that, we sat down and we discussed which positions we were going to have in this country. Peter Roy, the Mission Development Corrector. So we've got all of our competitors back in the ring here, ready for the presentation. The, the so today. fantastic third and win here at Crofts for for four and uh, oh, Caroline. Yes. And it shows Mary the longevity of these Mary dogs. We've got two dogs, our yeah, first and second, both 10 years old. Incredible, absolutely incredible. And working so well, so enthusiastic still. Yes, still got that enthusiasm, that want to work. And uh, both of these dogs, the first two, are going to be in our world uh, champ TGV in June. So we wish them well. So second prize is for Skiffle and Lucy Creek with their Mission Impossible inspired routine. And then down in third, we've got Pamela Sullivan and Mackie, and our final dog that just ran. Place was the last one to go. It's Pamela Sullivan, and it's a touch of Spain. They've all got beautiful pieces of engagement. It's wonderful to see. Look at those wagging tails. They are all having a brilliant time there, aren't they? They are. And don't forget, we've still got the international competition tomorrow. And yes. Where uh, Nikki? many competitors from different countries coming in. That's always a bit exciting, that competition, because uh, you don't quite know what they're going to do. Whereas in this country, obviously, we see many of the handlers. And uh, obviously, young Elsa there is going to be representing us. So Nikki Hinson and Elsa will be back tomorrow in that international final. And that's the freestyle. So, so that's props and lap of honor time. So here we go, they're going to take a lap of honor now. Well deserved. Third time winning this Hillworks Music All final here at Crux for Caroline Garrett. It was a great showcase that final of different types of music and different routines. It's so wide a variety of routines you can get in any of these finals. Arena and everybody loving that. So thank you, Richard. Thank you so much for all the expert insight there. No problem. What a great lineup! The first three are excellent. Are we all enjoying ourselves, folks? Well, we're having a great time as well, and that will continue all day. Now, on Sunday evening, you, you have a chance prior to that, because on Sunday evening, they'll decide uh, the, friends, the final of the Friends for Life competition. And I say competition, they're all very, very worthy people who have been put up for the award of Friends for Life. And you have a chance to vote for them. It doesn't work if you don't vote for them, so we're asking you to vote for the Friends for Life. You can do it online. The, the details will probably come up on, on screen soon. And if you do a search on the Kennel Club website, you'll find the details as well. And you can, you can do um, no doubt do it by email or text or whatever, messenger. So there you go. Just have a look at our list of com uh, people who are competing for that top shot there in Friends for Life. And uh, you can make up your own mind. I think because of the, the dire situation we knew she was in at the time, we all felt the same whenever we went back to that area, we wanted to check on Barry. I'm Sean Laidlaw and this is my rescue dog, Barry. 
before I found Barry, I was kind of lost in life. I'd left the military. I was kind of lost in civilian life. I didn't know, really know who I was, what I was, and losing that identity as a soldier was kind of hard. Like, I was struggling that bad that it was to the point where I thought, I don't want to be here anymore. Uh, I hit the reset button, and to me, normality was war. So I took a contract out in Syria to disarm bombs out there. Um, we'd had our morning routine done. Um, we'd driven in, parked up to a place that we'd been to before. We just heard a noise, a screaming noise. Um, and then there was this kind of concrete plinth, and that's where Barry was, just kind of caught in there. I said to him, right, let's get her back then, let's, let's go get her. So at the end of the day, once we finished our jobs, yeah. we'll just pick her up and we'll take her with us. One of my issues, I don't really think before I do, so uh, I got her back to camp and one of the guys turned to me and said, like, you've got a puppy. We have no puppy food. We have like, all these things that you need to care for a puppy, like, even like wee pads and things like that. Everyone had brought something to the table. The chefs were bringing um, dry Kellogg's as kibble. We had some of the dog handlers were donating us some food. Um, we had an American SEAL team that just turned up on our doorstep one day. But like, this is really weird. Like we're in the middle of this war zone and you've got someone like knocking on your front door to come play with your dog. Um, so it really distracted everyone from the harsh realities of what we were living in. I, um, I went to Syria kind of broken and not really knowing where I was in life and really on a knife edge of where I wanted to be on this earth and it wasn't until maybe week two of having buried that I realised I hadn't had any thoughts, I hadn't had an outburst or anything like that, she'd really kept me calm. I think that was when I first realised the, the effect that she was having on me. I never got to say that goodbye and that kind of really started to frustrate me. They were going to leave the camp and Barry had no home. So instantly I had to come up with a plan. Luckily enough, I was already talking to a charity called Warpaws. To try and get a dog out was really difficult. Um, so we actually ended up smuggling her inside of a fruit basket through the checkpoints. And as soon as she got through the border at the other end in Iraq, Warpaws were there, they grabbed her straight away and took her away. Everyone assumes that at the airport it was going to be this big romantic fairy tale ending where she comes running up to me and jumps to me like you see in all the American uh, like YouTube videos. And it was nothing like that. I even expected it to be like that. It wasn't like that at all. I've been getting sent progress pictures every now and then, so I knew she was growing, but I didn't realise how big she was until she came out of that cage. She just was looking at me, like, who, who is this? And then I got her to sit and I knelt down next to her and she stiffed my leg. And I started stroking her head and I think that's where it kind of clicked. Um, and she just like barrel rolled onto the floor and I had a pause in the air. As, as crazy as it sounds, I just sit there and talk to her. She doesn't judge, she just sits there and wants to be loved. She was the exact same as when I left her really. Uh, a little diva that loves attention, <laughs> that's just who she is. When I come home, everyone was saying, oh, it's great that you've rescued Barry and there was no way that I rescued her. She definitely rescued me. Um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. Without Jovi, life was a bit of a struggle. I've never had a, a dog quite like Jovi before. He is definitely one of a kind. So I'm Graham Sage, and this is my hearing dog, Jovi. So I started to lose my hearing at about 15, 16 years old. I did used to miss things like fire alarms and wake up alarms and cooker alarms and all of those sort of things that could cause safety issues. Sitting in, a, in an environment where you've got lots of people around you, but you feel alone because you can't get involved in, in the conversation because you're just not able to pick up what's being said. That also meant that I was keeping a bit to myself. My wife had heard about hearing dogs and recommended it. And um, so yeah, I sent in an application and, and it all kicked off from there. When I've got him, everyone is a lot more aware of that need um, to speak directly to me. Even if it's a conversation with someone else, they, they will speak clearer so I would understand. It really lit up our eyes as to how beneficial he really was. The boys love having him in the classroom, I must admit. Yeah, and they just have that sort of 
family feel when they're in the classroom. He's definitely helped the way that I teach and helped me understand the children better and the children understand me better and he can alert me to um, when the boys are uh, trying to communicate with me but I'm not necessarily hearing what they're saying or anything. Um, they can call him to them and then come and get me. If I've got a, an activity for the boys to go on, um, I can put a timer on and he'll come and alert me when, when their time's up. Uh, so at home he, um, he can wake me up to the, the alarm. Um, he alerts me to the doorbell. I'm so grateful that, that I've been introduced to him and, and you know, the, the sort of things that he does for me, not just the actual work side of it, you know, how, how he alerts me to all of these things, but the social side of it since getting him, it's, it's been a big, big change. And, and another thing to watch out for, I think, is if they're offering different breeds and combinations of breeds. I think that's the real red flag. There are a lot of deceitful breeders out there, but there are also a lot of good breeders. And you've just got to do your research. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Jim Rosenthal here alongside uh, Graham Partridge in the main arena, filling up very nicely on the second day of Crufts 2020. And uh, we are all set for a little bit of a new experience for both of us, uh, Graham, isn't it, really? And uh, rescue dog agility. It's not a competition, it's an exhibition. Promoting great work by all those rescue organisations within the United Kingdom. And friendly rivalry might be there, but there are some wonderful stories behind all these, behind all these uh, dogs, and we're looking forward to letting everybody know about them. Graham, welcome and good afternoon. Good afternoon, Jim. Uh, really looking forward to this event. Uh, I think we've got seven rescue organisations um, represented here today, but up and down the country there are a lot, lot more, and they do absolutely fabulous work uh, taking in dogs uh, that need to be rehomed for whatever reason, and we'll talk a bit more about that. Uh, in just a minute, but uh, it promises to be great fun. I'm not saying we're going it to is. see some top class agility, but uh, whatever happens t this afternoon is about having fun with your dog. It is, which is, of course, as, as you've told us many times, is what agility is all about. And what a nice change it makes, isn't it, Graham, that we're not up here staring at the clock and wondering about a hundredth of a second and wondering about rounds being ruined. We're just here to enjoy some wonderful dogs, tell some wonderful stories as well have a good chuckle along the way absolutely as you say and um we're going to see 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 some good fun we have got a little course laid out it's got yep. some tunnels and an a-frame um and some weaves uh, and i think there is a, a set order that they're supposed to be going around <laughs> it but i think we'll probably just we'll just probably just take, a, take well, that with a bit of yeah yeah pinch of salt i think as 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 per normal we will react to what we see in front of us and all of you watching no matter where you are will do the same i think we're looking at our first of the large dogs and that is uh, jemima uh, handler bev northy and um, what i will what i will do is just tell you the story before we see what um, jemima and bev can do so jemima uh, is a collie a hunt away, nearly three years of age. She was picked up as a stray, taken to the National Animal Welfare Trust, Hale Branch in Cornwall, lived with Bed for 15 months, and started agility training a year ago. Barks are fun, and that's the hunt away instinct in New Zealand where these dogs originate. That's how they herd cattle and sheep there. And she has boundless energy. And um, all these dogs will be the same we're not expecting <laughs> lightning speed are we over the a-frame and actually missed the contact and went back and hit oh the i think missed the contact yeah five points for that but uh, if you think i'm going to get that white bit you've got another thing coming i think was the expression there and the national anima animal welfare trust one of the, the top national welfare charities rehouses over 1200 homeless pets every single year. Now we're looking at Duke Malinois, 
Sarah Weller, the handler. Not the easiest dog, lacks a bit of confidence at times. But has taught the handler an enormous amount. And that's something you can talk about, Graham. We always say the handler has to teach the dog, but uh, obviously uh, Duke has taught Sarah a huge amount too. I think we can always learn uh, a lot from our animals, and especially when uh, we're dealing with animals that perhaps haven't had the best start in life. Um, they just need their confidence building, and that's why uh, we're watching a lot of these rescue organisations doing agility, because agility, uh, when you've got a rescue dog, is an absolutely fabulous way to help bond with your dog, to help build confidence, providing it's done correctly. Um, and then as you see at the end there, the first thing the dog does is go for its reward, which is the toy, and that's what makes doing agility so much fun. Next on the famous Crufts carpet is Hamish, three-year-old working sheepdog, Lester O'Connell, the handler from Scottish Rescue. Working sheepdog, rescued at 13 weeks from a house with two small children, taking into a foster care uh, by Lester. Member of our family after day one and fitted in perfectly with the three other collies. Competing in agility for a couple of years, has worked up to grade seven last season. I'm looking forward to the challenge of the championship. So this could well be the real deal in the next couple of years, Graham. Yes, uh, uh, but isn't that fantastic to see a dog that's had a poor start in life, uh, forming a new bond, new relationship with its new owner. Uh, and doing something which it obviously absolutely loves. I mean, what better, what better than that? And a terrific empathy here between the sizable crowd in the arena and all the dogs and the handlers. We're looking at Sooty, a Labrador cross, handler Helen Allison from the National Animal Welfare Trust once again. Six-year-old doing agility training for the last uh, three years or so. Very smart cookie indeed. And you can see why she's uh, nicknamed Miss Wiggles. That old body never stops wiggling, Graham. No, and she's having an absolutely fantastic time. Uh, and unfortunately, what we hear is that quite often uh, with dogs that need to be rehomed is, oh, they were too boisterous, um, I couldn't control them, we weren't expecting any of this. But uh, if you can start and do something with your dog, such as agility, there are lots of other things that you can do. But if you've got a, a mentally tired dog and a physically tired dog, you've got a dog that's going to be so much you know, easier to live with. Right, and they are both enjoying this experience hugely. And next to go, uh, uh, next is Debbie Snedden with uh, Jack. And... Uh, Facebook will be blame it for many things, but uh, one of them could be Jack, and this is a nice story. His post uh, appeared courtesy of the Dog Aid Society, seeking a home for him, referred to as Big Daft Jack. But he's affable, he's affectionate, doesn't take life too seriously, and he realises that agility is fun, and he's moving up the grades. He's, he's grade five, so he's getting there, Graham. Well, it sounds a bit like me, actually. He's affable, <laughs> loves agility, um, and yes. I'm getting up through oh, the grades hold on gradually. A fun, yeah. fun. I'll, 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 we'll have a debate about fun. <laughs> there we go, picking up that toy that they love so much, that tuggy toy. And Most of the training we do for agility is all done with uh, fun methods, either a toy or titbits. Uh, it can even be just vocal, um, motivational praise. Everything we try and do, um, and it should be done even with dog training, everything should be positive training, Absolutely. concentrating on not having any negatives at all. And there we go, then there's a, that's the large section completed. You'd have noticed one or two. Adjustments being made to the course. We have the first of the medium dogs to come. Mystic Meg or Megan Rescue from Ireland. Jody Parry is the handler. Valgrave's Border Collie Animal Rescue. Rescue charity based in Surrey. Established in 1978 by Val Phillips. Organisation Small and Personal Animal Rescue Service. And really, Graham, let's talk about the fantastic job that each and every animal rescue service does. In an ideal world, we wouldn't need rescue organisations at all, but unfortunately we do. Um, 
some dogs need to be rescued for um, for very good reasons, such as their owners died or something like that, and that they're, they're, they're having trouble placing the dog. Um, but uh, unfortunately, people do take on dogs that are unsuitable for them, um, or they just the dogs, you know, become have a litter of puppies and are unwanted, and they just dump them. I mean, it's just awful. But the, the time and the effort that the, the volunteers for these organisations put in is just so commendable. It's not true. We're looking at Ash, two-year-old Labrador Cross. Alison King is the handler, adopted uh, from Blue Cross. Puppy Farm Rescue, this one, separated from his sisters because they used to fight over the food. And then he went to be a prison dog handler, and the idea was he was going to be a sniffer dog. But um, he wasn't having any of that, was Ash, hated the environment, and in fact managed to escape prison twice. <laughs> yeah, I, I always try and avoid working myself if I can. So, yeah, I, I, do, I do have some, some empathy with the dog, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> there we go. And Alison has worked really hard uh, with this dog. A first-class clown and uh, tail wagging there, full of enjoyment. Well done to Ash and well done to Alison as well. Derek Elms and Keir, crossbreed, nine-year-old rescue, rescued from the Dogs Trust at eight weeks of age, but has really rocked on th since then, and I think we're going to see something pretty classy, a couple of championship tickets, XL Dog Agility Medium Team last year, championship final in 2019, part of the XL Dog Agility Medium Team for 2020, and we'll be in the championship this weekend. This is a lovely, lovely animal. Bit of a class act, this pair. They've really taken to the agility and obviously doing really, really well. You can see, well done. Here's uh, Claire Wilkins and Tilly. Four-year-old. Claire's had her since she was eight weeks old. First dog as well. Learnt agility together, these two. And there's a real competitive appetite that, uh, that Tilly has. And that's interesting, isn't it? The two of them, the handler and the dog, learning the game side by side. Yes, and that's fantastic. As you say, you can learn so much together, learn from each other's mistakes. Um, and it's an evolving process. Dog training in itself is an evolving process. You have to, have to know each other and build this bond and this confidence uh, between the partnerships. And that, that's part of doing something, whether it be uh, agility that we're seeing here or doing some working trials or some obedience or even just going out and having fun with your dog and throwing a ball. Well, that's what they've been doing so far, having plenty of fun. And we move through and look at uh, Julian Mills with Daisy, five-year-old five uh, crossbreed. She's just turned four. Bit of a diva, this dog. And uh, a mind of her own, as has been underlined here. You want me to do what? You want me to jump that? You are kidding. No, oh, I'll no go around scary the side. person in the corner. Go, go <laughs> around the side. It's love. Yeah. No, I know, I know that man sat down and, and he does deserve barking out, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be interesting to see uh, Daisy. We'll, we'll take her own time, we'll do her own thing, we'll go her own way. And so many of the crowd here goes, yeah, just like my dog. And I think this is also, a, I know we're, we're laughing, but it's actually um, quite interesting because the dog's a little bit unsure, but you can see... Uh, the handler there is just taking his time, keeping yep. it fun. Everything's got to be light and just, just saying to the dog, come on, there's nothing to be afraid of. Let's get on and do, uh, well, do what we've trained Julian to do. Julian used to be in our TV business behind the scenes and uh, his career has obviously rocked on since he left the world of television. Well done to Julian. In the spotlight for a change. And well done to Daisy as well. Very much. I'll take that now. Thank you former unit manager in TV. OK, here's Laura and here's uh, Annie, six-year-old, five-year-old cockapoo. Bit of a genetic mystery. This one. Oh, whoa, hold on a moment. Hold on a moment. Just pop back this way, if you would. Meeting and greeting in the crowd is Laura. Yeah, uh, well, and, but she got the reaction. Someone popped their head over and said hello back, you know, so that was very nice. That's Annie. Annie, the dog. Laura, the handler. And um, Annie, well, used to lack a little bit of confidence, but um, 
unbelievably friendly and looking to make friends with around about 5,000 plus people in the arena. <laughs> and definitely not taking the shortest way around here, eh, Graham? Exploring every nook and cranny of the, of the arena. No, definitely not bothered about time faults, but uh, no. the main thing is, it's just... It's, it's but there you go. Oh, there I, go. I can do it. I can do it when I want. What's the problem here? It's just the equivalent, really, of, 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 of taking your dog out for a walk, for a stroll, having a bit of fun and having a jump around a few obstacles, really. That's what we're seeing here, and a big hug and a kiss at the end. I'll go where I want. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, there is expecting the, 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 the dog to wave back, I think. <laughs> this is Polo and Tessa. And during Polo's adolescence, Wood Green supported Tessa's Polo's with behaviour and training advice. This with three other rescue dogs. Now this, the first rescue dog agility performance, and fingers crossed, uh, for Tess, but used to the spotlight, this one, Polo performed on stage at the London Theatre for autism, raising awareness uh, of autism and celebrating the talents of autistic youth and adults. And might be the first time, but um, taken to the Croft spotlight exceptionally well, Graham. Yeah, now now we're getting into it, really. It's just these dogs do do know how to play to a crowd, and uh, it's, just, it's just having a little bit of a bark and uh, getting the respected reaction from the crowd. Are absolutely loving this display. It really is great to see. Last of the medium dogs, then. Polo handled by Tessa, and that'll mean another little uh, alteration in the uh, height of the fences. And we have um, quite a few small dogs to come. So just while they're, they're uh, altering the height of the jumps for the small dogs, uh, just an important message is uh, that if you are thinking about having a dog, uh, just consider popping along to the rescue organisations and just see what, uh, what sort of dogs they've got. I'm sure some, one of them's going to steal your heart and it really is absolutely fabulous to be able to give a dog a new home. Now there's an... Oh gone round the arena oh look at that look at that and let me tell you betty two years of old two years of age poodle cross handled by lindsay from wood green and would have to say not spectacularly concentrated and interested in the course here but what an engaging animal that is and sort of peering at that stuff what are those things exactly what do i have to do here okay i'll follow you and no uh, tunnel you must be kidding I'm, I'm going over there i'll pop back all right no no sorry sorry that looks a bit dark and threatening to me in will she come out yay there we go there we go well done betty and will she go in again that's the next precisely. thing she's back in there precisely. now precisely and but, I've been in there once, I'm not going in there again. This could be quite a lengthy process, this, you know, and um, the A-frame ignored completely. That's probably <laughs> wise. That's probably wise. And, and again, you could, if you had put the bubble with the dog, you go, well, look, I've been through one of those once. I'm surely not again. I'll go around the side. I've done that once. In you go. We wonder whether which end <laughs> Betty will reappear. Fantastic. Fantastic. What a show. What a show. <laughs> he doesn't want to go out now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just uh, can't step on that bar. Nope. I'll do it my way. <laughs> Okay, this is 16-year-old uh, Megan Good and the handler for three-year-old Trixie, a terrier cross. And just looking around, everybody here, there's pretty much a smile on everyone's face watching these dogs, knowing the background and knowing how entitled they are to have a couple of minutes of absolute pure pleasure. 
And it's just a little bit of style there as well, Graham. That uh, you were just hello, hello, hello. <laughs> it's a popular place to go. I don't, I don't quite know if that that far right-hand corner as we look at it. I think somebody's got a bag of chips over there or something like that. I think. Might be. Hold on, A-frame. Oh, great, great effort over the A-frame. Again, Trixie, I'll do it if I want. No worries about that. I can do this. But just uh, wants to see a few of the sights on the way round, Graham, really. Oh, now, now we're going to have a great finish, you see. Well done. <laughs> this is classy over the A-frame. Championship classy. Absolutely. Made both the contacts there, Jim, you notice. Okay. Yep, we're into the big dog uh, section now. Jack, four-year-old poodle cross. Cat Combley, a big dog emerging out of sync, but no one worries too much, do we? He probably just turned up and said, I'll go now. <laughs> I like the look of the smaller jumps. Why not? We'll take some of that. Right, we're back on course now with Bridget and uh, Lightning. Papillon Cross Collie, rescued from the streets in Romania and brought to a UK foster home. Two and a half years been in, in that home. Very friendly and affectionate dog. Not the only dog that we will see who've been rescued from Romania. Happy ever after then, uh, a small rescue center based in Bristol. Well done to the Papillon, well done to Lighting, and well done to Bridget. They're off and running already. That is Diamond and uh, Sharon Can, six-year-old Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Good bit of style going through the weaves. And Sharon trains with you, Graham. Yes, she does. We'll wait to see how she gets on before I admit it, but uh, this dog is just such great fun. Uh, it has not got a serious thought in its head at all, uh, much to Sharon's frustration on occasions, but you just have to love this dog. Absolutely fantastic. Well done, Diamond. And well done to Sharon as well as we turn our attention uh, to Anne Chalice and Bear, seven-year-old Pom. Little Battersea rescue dog, this one. Battersea's been around since 1860 in central London, cares for over 7,000 animals a year. She's having a great time out there. This is a really develop into a really good round, Jim. <laughs> we should develop into serious commentary huge, in a minute. I could but very quick, we should have put the clock on, really, shouldn't we? On to Bear. Well, what is Bear doing here, Fantastic. you wonder? Proper pedigree. Proper future as well. 40 seconds that round. Lightning. Here's Fergus. Joe Lyons, the handler. Started puppy training at Wood Green when he was 10 weeks old. Uh, all the fun of the second afternoon at Crofts in front of him, Graham. Terriers, they just they just have the best time anyway. Yeah, oh no, well oh, uh, no, you must you've got yep, tidbits okay. in there. No, give me a tidbit, he said then I might do it. Oh, okay. It's all bribery, is it? Is that, is that the secret of it all? No, it is. <laughs> Oh, you can see in the back pocket there, you can see the dog's oh, toy. Oh, and that's you. what he's after. Oh, gotcha. Well, of course, of <laughs> taking very much um, a course of his own is Fergus. Just occasionally, though, glimpses of uh, what could be an absolute quality agility dog. Nice jumping style there as well. Well done, Fergus. A little tweak at the end. Yeah, no, no is problem. He, no problem. Is he going to get that toy? That's what we want to know no now. Problem. Is he going to get the toy? Yes, he there is. There we oh. go. That's what he's waiting for. <laughs> now, he's gonna now he's going to kill it. Now he's going to kill it. Yeah, I've got it. Nobody else is having it. Now, he has the taste. Oh, is that a chicken? Hang on, is that? 
Looks like... He's got the taste of the carpet, all right. I'm here, I'm not going to go. And by the way, I'll take a good old lump out of my toy. And All right. I think that's, that's a squeaky chicken. Is Lucky it? Dog. That's me done. Jenny and Teddy. Oh, hold on. He's... Hold on. Here comes that chicken again. It's back. Oh, now here we go. It's mine. It's Fergus has got it. Took a curtain call there. Interesting reappearance. Wanted to want another, another little bit of adulation. I think he just wanted to show Teddy that he, he's got a toy and he didn't. So. OK, we're looking at Teddy and Jenny, another Romanian rescue, picked up off the street with his blind mother and two sisters. Right, action replay. Here comes Fergus, plus chicken. Lost it there, regained it there. Get that off me if you can. Not a chance. This is Amy Bennett with the cockapoo. Never. Oh, look at this, Jim. <laughs> hello, hello. Get the clock on it, quick. Get the timer up. Unreal. What are you doing here? Whoa. 29 seconds. Beat that, Graham. 29 yeah, well. seconds. I, I've known Amy for a long time, but she uh, is actually a, a massive agility <laughs> person. She's got several agility oh. dogs. But look, this is a rescue dog. Look what you can do with, and achieve with it. Fantastic. Here's Claire and Quizit. 13-year-old lurcher, retired from agility, but still loves a sprint around the course and still loves a very steady stroll around the course as well enjoying his senior years now and oh yeah big dog i've been involved taking the small jumps because uh, of his health and that makes a lot of sense as well the welfare of the dog all 26,000 of them that are here all important and a nice little how can i say elderly pace i can empathize with that hopping over those jumps but still stylish after all these years Still enjoying himself, still having a great time. Here's Teresa McTaggart and Bramble. Four-year-old uh, Terrier Cross came to 18 weeks uh, to Teresa. Very friendly and intelligent. And one of the biggest achievements. Came third in the first ever championship final in April of last year. So another dog with plenty of ability, Graham. No, and you can see why doing really, really well here. But And they're making it look easy, but I can tell you there's been a lot of work. And when you have a rescue dog, there's that extra bit of work to put in it as well. So this is a really great effort we're seeing here today. Brilliant. This from the Scottish Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Lovely to see them here. This is the penultimate uh, small dog then. Sue White running lollipop for Battersea, rescued at seven months and now lives with 11 other dogs. Sue in the wheelchair, competed in the World Para Agility Show as well. Absolutely fantastic. I uh, actually had the, the privilege several years ago of judging the Para Agility World Cup. Had some fantastic stories, fantastic dogs. Sue's a regular competitor on the agility circuit uh, week in and week out. Uh, she's got quite a few dogs, but uh, this is just uh, one of uh, her uh, rescue. In fact, I think she's got 11, but uh, this is just one of the rescue dogs. She does great, great effort. And uh, the, the wheelchair's going pretty slowly at the moment, but let me tell you, that, that wheelchair's got, got turbo boost on it. OK. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. There's, there's not a lot of turbo <laughs> boost on show at the moment from Lollipop, I have to say. Rooted at the moment, Lollipop. And actually sort of quite comfy there as well but um, 
Ah, I see the I reason said, yep, why. When no. you've got to go, okay. you've got to go, I okay. think is the expression. I don't think that happens too often on that uh, green carpet, does it? But uh, that would explain one reason why there wasn't a lot of mobility there. <laughs> perhaps, <laughs> perhaps lollipop will uh, get back in gear, if I can put it that way. There we go. Okay, now then. Now you know what you've got to do. In and out of the tunnel. Wants another treat to go over the A-frame. That's what he's after. <laughs> not daft. Not daft, really. You give me one of those, I'll go through that tunnel. Cheers. Another one. Over that jump. He knows. Another he knows. one. <laughs> well, for a variety of reasons, we won't forget Lollipop in a hurry. <laughs> Quite an apt name, really, but I think we'll, <laughs> we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. So today we've got a couple of dogs that we are going to be saying goodbye to. So the entire of the rest of the dog world. Come on, Sue, well done. Okay, here comes the superstar. Here comes Ollie the Jack Russell a couple of years ago. Widespread adulation. Where he and his owner Karen Parker gave a fantastic show here, unforgettable, a YouTube sensation, and still got that uh, massive slice of showmanship about him, has Ollie. One of the most popular dogs you're going to see throughout Crofts 2020, this. Brilliant, brilliant cameo at the end. Thank you, Ollie. Had to be here, had to do it. This is my stage, this is where I belong. I am the entertainer. And you could almost see the smile on Ollie's face. <laughs> Great pictures as well. And by the way, nifty over that A-frame. <laughs> Well, I'd love to tell you who this dog is, but I haven't got a clue, if I'm honest with you. But um, we'll do our best, as always, Graham. I think it's uh, another farewell performance. Another uh, cameo. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it is. <laughs> Bit of a tunnel blocker. Leave the best till last. Leave the prime entertainers to close the show. That's an old show business, Maxim, and that's what we're getting here today in the Rescue Dogs Agility. Uh, just a bit of a show-off, really. Now we're going to play peek -a -poo. Oh, yeah, That's there we right. go. That's right. Guess which end I'm going to come out of the tunnel. Ah, don't fancy that jump at all, nor that one. It's almost a game. It's almost a, a bit of Mickey oh, taking oh, from the dog. Me. Now, that's definitely against the rules. I promise you that... I, I, wow. Because I'm a judge, you know, and okay. I, that is against the rules. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be a few faults, that. Has to be the first time I've actually seen a dog take a chunk out of an obstacle. <laughs> likes, likes the taste as well, I think. What a rascal. Absolute rascal. They're loving it, though. And I think we're going to get a parade of all the rescue dogs that we have seen. Well, very different entertainment to what uh, myself and Graham are used to, and it's all about uh, watching the clock and are they touching the uh, the right parts of the A-frame and the dog walk and are they going in the weeds the right way, etc., etc. But what a wonderful slice of entertainment at Crubs. Something at this fantastic show for everybody. And uh, great stories behind so many of those rescue dogs. Too.
What Leah loves is to be able to get to know a patient. You know, we walk down the corridor and people say, hello, gorgeous, and he looks up, and I'm sure he thinks his name is gorgeous at times. I'm Lindsay Uglow. I'm the lead therapy dog handler of the team that visits Southampton Children's Hospital. SCH Therapy Dogs is Southampton Children's Hospital Therapy Dog, so we're a team of six therapy dogs and four handlers. Um, the minute Lindsay and the dogs walk on, people switch off, people have time to relax. Um, the patients that are awake absolutely love the treat of having a dog. If somebody who's non-clinical can come in and just offer them something that we can't as staff, they bring a bit of home into the unit, into what is a really clinical, intense environment. I knew nothing of his diagnosis or his condition and then it was suggested that maybe I, I should introduce the dog to Oscar. Lindsay brought Leo over, put his paw onto Oscar's bed and instantly his heart rate dropped and we got a smile. Um, and it was a miracle. It was. If we can give them that little bit of magic to cling on to then that was, that's really great. That smile made, meant a lot to everybody. All of what we do comes under animal assisted intervention. So within that, there's animal assisted activity, which is meet and greet. They'll go and say hello to everybody. They, they're like speed daters. If we're doing an escort, or if we're supporting a child who's having a particular procedure done, we might be sitting with that parent and child for 40 minutes. And it's all about keeping the child with a, a positive thought process um, whilst they're having healthcare. Leo just comes into the unit, he's such a chilled dog. Just having that calming time, just patting Leo, is just therapy for us all. They're greeted by people from the minute we walk in the door to the minute we leave. He will trot in like he's owning the place, but to try and get him to leave on occasion, I've actually had to carry him out. The dogs just come in and their friendly faces, they give them something other than, than the healthcare environment to think about. They're not there to persuade or cajole the children, they're just simply dogs. And we are the bridge between the healthcare team and the, the child. Because we've been through so much and we've gone through such a traumatic event, I think we've formed a lifelong friendship that will never be changed. I am PC Louise McMullen and this here is a retired police dog Wolfie. Specialist told me that I would never be an operational police officer again, not only a dog handler. I wasn't going to listen to that because I'm quite stubborn and uh, was adamant I was going to get back. She just kept like striving and get, making little steps at a time. And it was quite a long journey really for her. Just showed that desire, like I am not going to be told I can't do it. Uh, so with the support of West Midlands Police and my inspector at the time, I managed to get back to being a fully operational dog handler. Wolf and her immediately connected. As soon as they got together, it's as if they'd been together for, as from puppies. I think they only did a two-week rehandle course and then went out back out on the streets operational. I must have been knocked out and my initial thoughts were as I opened my eyes was seeing the flames because the car had caught fire. I injured my uh, wrist, fractured eye socket, fractured jaw and I also sustained quite bad injuries to the centre of my back. As I was crawling out the car my only concern was that I had to get the dog out of the back of the vehicle. I got there, I could still see some smoke or steam billowing. Louise was on the floor with Wolfie. I just knew that I had, to, I had to get him to the vets because I thought he would die. He's not just a dog, he's a colleague to us. I'm not shy to say that it was, it was emotional. I was in hospital then, just being apart and not able to be near him was horrible. He had to be carried out of the vets, he couldn't walk. He had hydrotherapy, he also saw a physiotherapist there. He's also helped me because I had um, a bad back and I was limited in, in how much I could do walking, so the two of us together must have been a right sight to see. 
Wolfie passed his licence again in the May 2019. And they proved that they were very capable of going back out there and going back out on the streets. However, um, Louise quickly identified um, some of Wolfie's behaviours that he wasn't actually happy in the vehicle. We had a really busy set of night shifts and I think it took him back to that November. We put it down to the fact that Wolfie is suffering from post-traumatic stress. Events such as the accident that we've been through not only affects us, but it also affects them. My instant decision was to retire him from police work. Our friendship has grown even more in the fact that we spend more quality time together now, I think. It's sometimes nice to sit have that companionship and that affection and love from them to make you smile. Ellie is my absolute life. She is just my rock for everything. She is just my constant sidekick. I probably wouldn't be here, to be honest, if it weren't for Ellie. My name's Hayley and this is my dog, Ellie. When it happened, it just felt like my world had just fallen apart. Um, we was all sitting here as a family and she went upstairs and she said she'd be back down for lunch and she never did. We were best friends and she was my biggest support network and she was my idol. All my family had someone to talk to and someone to share their grief with and I didn't. Not have her there in my life, um, I just thought I just can't do life without her. Ellie stepped up straight away afterwards. She was my rock and she just followed me everywhere. Our bond just grew stronger. She just stuck by me. Like she knew what was going on. She just would put her head on my lap if I was feeling sad at the time. If I just wanted to cry, she'd be there with me. She just lay by my side. It was like she was saying everything was gonna be okay. Ellie was my motivation to get up in the morning. She was my motivation to get out of bed and get dressed, even if it was just to come and feed her but she'd get me up, she'd get me walking, which in turn got me socialising straight away and talking about what happened. And she got me back to what I love doing, which is agility and here works music. We go agility once a week and we train here works music every day. We train tricks at home, um, whether it be out in the park or in the living room. When I'm training with her, it's like I forget about everything around me. We go to compete every couple of weeks or so. We go to local competitions with agility and we travel up and down the country for who works music. When we go to shows, it's like being in a bubble, just me and Ellie. Um, nothing in the world matters. It's just me and her spending time together, training and enjoying ourselves. Being able to take home a rosette, it's good to be able to look back and see the journey we've taken together. Ellie was the reason I carried on my activity, such as agility and here works music. She just gave me something to aim for in life. I owe Ellie my life because she's just one incredible dog. Without Jovi, life was a bit of a struggle. I've never had a, a dog quite like Jovi before. He is definitely one of a kind. So I'm Graham Sage, and this is my hearing dog, Jovi. So I started to lose my hearing at about 15, 16 years old. I did used to miss things like fire alarms and wake up alarms and cooker alarms and all of those sort of things that could cause safety issues. Sitting in, a, in an environment where you've got lots of people around you, but you feel alone because you can't get involved in, in the conversation because you're just not able to pick up what's being said. That also meant that I was keeping a bit to myself. 
my wife had heard about hearing dogs and recommended it and um, so yeah I sent in an application and, and it all kicked off from there. When I've got him everyone is a lot more aware of that need um, to speak directly to me even if it's a conversation with someone else they, they will speak clearer so I would understand. It, it really lit up our eyes as to how beneficial he really was. The boys love having him in the classroom I must admit yeah and they just have that sort of family feel when they're in the classroom. He's definitely helped the way that I teach and helped me understand the children better and the children understand me better and he can alert me to um, when the boys are uh, trying to communicate with me but I'm not necessarily hearing what they're saying or anything. Um, they can call him to them and then come and get me. If I've got a, an activity for the boys to go on um, I can put a timer on and he'll come and alert me when, when their time's up. Uh, so at home he, um, he can wake me up to the, the alarm, um, he alerts me to the doorbell. I'm so grateful that, that I've been introduced to him and, and you know, the, the sort of things that he does for me, not just the actual work side of it, you know, how, how he alerts me to all of these things, but the social side of it since getting him, it's, it's been a big, big change. Some wonderful stories being told there. Jim Rosenthal and Graham Partridge back with you from the uh, main arena at Crufts 2020. Looking forward to the Crufts Agility singles coming your way in just a few minutes' time. Thousands of you all over the world have been uh, joining us uh, since yesterday on our YouTube channel. We always want to hear from you. We always want to hear your questions. And, uh, and we put them to the maestro on my right to Graham. And so, hashtag Ask Crufts, does the novice apply to dog or to the handler or to both, Graham? Well, uh, fairly easy one. Uh, for these competitions at Crufts, uh, it applies to the dog. And a novice dog is uh, basically one that's in grades three, four or five. Uh, and we have a grading system of one to seven, so they fall right in the middle. There you go. That is the first question answered by Graham Parcher. We move on to another one of you who have been in touch with us on hashtag Ask Crufts. And here is the second one. OK, now you have uh, done this job many, many times. Who chooses the judges to judge agility here at Crufts? Ultimately, the decision as to who judges the agility at Crufts lives with the uh, separate Crufts committee. Um, but they receive recommendations from uh, a, a working party um, and then they make the decision actually who does it. We have, we have a judge's path, so we, we try to bring our judges uh, through a series of events uh, which increase in pressure and size and then culminating in, in the big, big major prestige events. But uh, ultimately, the, the answer to the question is it's the Crufts Committee who chooses. And just a little supplementary from me, any time limit how long you can be a judge at Crufts? Uh, you can. You only get to judge the championship at Crufts once, and I did that uh, well, I don't know, 2013, I think. Um, and I don't know that anybody has ever judged uh, the main arena more than once ever. Okay. Next question: How many dogs qualify to the championships in each class? Tricky one for you, that one. There, you, there are no, there's no limit to the number of dogs that can take part in a championship class. It's only governed by the number of championship uh, events which are held each year. And I think it's about 34, something like that, could be a bit less. So if, if there's a championship class, then the winner of that championship class uh, qualifies to compete at Crufts. And then also last year's winner gets to compete here. It, if you get eliminated in either of the classes that are held at Crufts, uh, you can't go through to the final. And the final is 50% of the entry up to a maximum of 20 dogs. Very comprehensive answer to that one. Thank you, Graham. A couple more still to come, I think. OK, we will take a couple more questions later on because they are clearing the course, and that means we are getting down to business. The agility singles, uh, a series of heats 
gaining qualifying points throughout the year. Highest scorers are here. Top quality dogs. We heard Graham talking about uh, the dogs. Six or seven dogs only. It's a three-part competition. Jumping this morning, we're about to see the agility. Combined scores for the evening final. And this evening, only the top four small and medium dogs and the top eight large dogs will be here. Plus the winners if they are not in the combined and we're going to see the large dogs first and we're about to to welcome the Crufts agility judge Martin Cavill who lives in Newport in South Wales and we've uh, got on he's got a bit of help Martin again has Martin hasn't he Graham and uh, tell us about that if you could yeah there we see a picture of Amanda Pig uh, she is the up contact judge or the assistant judge here for this event at Crufts she's also uh, got the honour of being the one of the, the assistant judges at the European Open Agility Championships, which have been held this year in uh, July at Rutland. Uh, and, in fact, our judge for this event, Martin Cavill, is also one of the two British judges which have been selected to uh, officiate at this event as well. So both of the judges that we're going to see here today are actually going to be officiating at the European Open Championships that will be the highest honour. And there we have Mr. Martin Cavill, heavily involved in the uh, in the Kennel Club and all its activities. Uh, and as you say, okay, probably one of the only people in this country who will ever get to judge at the European Championship. A great honour for so him. Got for and uh, I've got the honour of actually... Uh, you're heavily involved in that. We'll be talking a bit about the Europeans over the next couple of days. And Martin, a real dog lover, as just about uh, everybody is here. Eight dogs in his household including his wife's dogs and he has been uh, judging for 12 years and uh, Martin takes centre stage here and that extra pair of eyes that uh, have been introduced here at Crofts this year to make sure that everything is right and proper. First of 16 large dogs, Joe Gleed in the Great Britain squad and Scooter. Last year's European Open. Scooter's fourth time at Crufts. And Joe is expecting next month. And we're expecting great things uh, from Scooter as well. Quick start, Scooter barking her way round. Tight turns at the top there, setting a very high standard early on, as expected. So quickly there over the dog walk. Great contact at the end too. Not much wrong with this thus far. Tunnel in and out. Great sound effects through that tunnel. Weaves right at the fire. This is so quick and accurate. Excellent. What a standard it's setting. Slight little twitch of hesitation there. Up and down over the A-frame. Little pause at the end. Big pause at the end, actually. And yeah, and unfortunately, they're picking there up was an elimination on this, that one. for a wrong course. Uh, but uh, Joe did very well, and we wish her uh, very well with the impending arrival. Absolutely. Uh, Sarah Bacon and Dream, six-year-old Border Collie. Talk us round this one, Grant. Talk us round the course. OK, lovely course this. Onto the seesaw. There's a big pull off the tunnel there across the face of it. Over the long jump and now left-handed. This is a fairly easy piece. Snake there, round the back again. Into the tunnel now. Fast run onto that dog walk. Must make contact with the white bit at the end over the spread. Turn into the tunnel. Now this is an oblique entry into the weaving poles. Means the handle's also got to cross behind there to get on the correct side for the next little piece. And there we go. Oh, that's a pole down over the AJ and the last jump. Well done. Fantastic time, 34.794. Just the five faults. Fantastic effort there. Only just, look at that, just clipped it. Addict, six-year-old Border Collie, handler Greg Derrett, 30 consecutive years completing at Crufts. Addict's second time here. So an elimination and five faults so far. What will Greg and Addict do? We're watching the large dogs in the 
Croft singles. Good contact to the end of the seesaw. Tight turn. This is a testing part of the course for them all. A lot of tight twisters there. Good in and out of the tunnel. Dog walk. Contact at the end just slipped off the side a bit, but it's okay. It's all fine. And it's all clear. And the time is good. Williams looking for the next one. Just took that one again. Tight left hander. Up and down over the A frame. Clear. Good. Up and down over the Kennel Club, 38.1. That's the time to beat. Puts him into the lead. And oh, see that long jump, bounce and rock. Didn't fall, so no fault there. Sean Illingworth is next to go. With image, seven-year-old Border Collie. Became an agility champion last year. Second in this competition last year, Sean and image. So a a partnership to watch. Just five faults early on. Just this will infuriate us. And now she's got the push because uh, the whole idea of the the second part is a, it's a two-part competition culminating in the uh, combination of the two rounds into a final for this evening where they start with a clean sheet. So if they've got five faults, she knows there are going to be other people here with clear rounds, so she needs to be one of the fastest fives if she can. And she's doing great effort here at trying to get a really great time. And look at the time, Jim. 33 seconds, phenomenal speed, particularly over the dog walk. And just the only blemish, just clip that part. First of two dogs for Martin Reed, snooze, three-year-old Border Collie. Martin from Plimtree in Devon in the GB squad, this pair. These are the best of the best, you can see. They are absolutely on it from the start. A real step up. Pace and confidence, superbly trained dogs. Trained to be at their peak right here at Crofts. Look at that over the top, wonderful. Big left-hander as well. This is Martin and Snooze wasting no time, no snoozing in those weaves. Left-hander, A-frame is excellent. It's going to be very close. It's well inside, isn't it? Look at that. Fantastic work from Martin Reed and Snooze. Great effort. Lovely running dog walk there. Bearing in mind this dog is only just three years of age. It's already there. I think a grade seven dog. So uh, we're expecting big things of this dog uh, now and in the future. Bright five-year-old Border Collie and Joanne Tristram from Gloucester in the European Open last year. Also on the GB squad, these two. Oh dear. Oh dear again. That's a, that, that's a shame. Hit the one and then approached the next obstacle all wrong. But still has to push and push. Remember combined scores slipped off the side there, but hesitated. It's, it's, and went the wrong way coming out of the tunnel there. Even more time was, uh, was lost. It's been a tough round this for Joanne and for Bright. Up over the A-frame. Time's respectable. They picked up 10 faults. So, very excitable dog, this. Uh, and it uh, just started to, to get away from her halfway, halfway through there. So, she decided just to, to pause the dog and then uh, just to carry on. Sean Ellingworth, second dog with agent, four-year-old Border Collie, homebred boy, super special dog. Second time at Crufts and part of Team GB's development squad selected last year. You're looking agent, the border collie. Away goes agent. Through the tyre there. Right in front of us, this is the seesaw. Good start to this round from agent and from Sean. Such a good handler, seen her many times here over the years. Pointing towards the tunnel. They are really travelling over that dog walk at the moment. 21 seconds. The time is really good. What about the Wees? Not losing any time there at all. It's going to threaten the leaders. This one needs a big finish here up and down over the A-frame. Hops over the last jump. Well, 34.0 for Sean. Up into second place. Excellent stuff, Graham.
great, great effort there. And she's only just had a couple of dogs to, uh, to catch her breath. So look at this. Fantastic. Couple of strides there. Uh, hits the contact. Brilliant. You're looking at last year's winning combination, Pebbles and Natasha Wise. Seven-year-old Border Collie loves the green carpet and competitions at Crufts. Third year in the championship with Pebbles, part of the GB agility team. They got bronze medal at the World Championships in Finland. A classy, classy pairing, this. Off to a fast start. Great contact at the end of the seesaw. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Bolts there. Oh, that is a pity. Pesenke was a tremendously fast start from Natasha and Pebbles. And now they have to push on. Now they have to push on. But there is an elimination there, unfortunately. There's an elimination after going over that jump. But they will still push on and complete the round. That's a shame for last year's winning combination as well, Graham. Such a shame. All or nothing, really. Collects it. You see the way she crosses in front of the dog, doing what they call a blind cross, and classy set of weaves there. This is Duca and Marita Davis, very, very quick three-year-old border collie. Second time at Crufts, became an agility champion, competed for Team GB at the Europeans and Worlds in the Great Britain squad as well, and just three years of age. A young, quick dog is Duca. Let's see. And keep the faults off the bottom of the screen. And the future really is bright, as I say. Another dog that's only just three years of age at the top of its game. Um, all they're going to do now is just get better with experience. Marita's one of the top pounders in the country now, doing an absolutely fantastic job, as you can see, up and over that A-frame in the blink of an eye. What a great finish that is. 34-4-8-4. And into the top three goes Marita and Duca. Clear and quick. 34.4. Jukebox going to be four on Monday. Border Collie, Gemma Haycock, the handler, not too far away from Northampton. Duke's first time competing at Cross. Very excited to be here and a very promising combination. Yelping round the main arena as well. Just a bit of a clash between dog and handler there. We don't see that too often. Brown. No, if the judge thinks it's deliberate, then there'll be a, be a, be a fault. But if not, um, it's just a little bit of time lost. It's good speed. It's well up with the clock as well on, on the weaves on that far side. This will be a very respectable time turning into the finishing three. Obstacles up and down over the A-frame and down over the kennel club as well. 33.6 and um, Gemma Haycock doing really, really well but picking up five faults along the way. This is Costa and Dalton Meredith, seven-year-old working sheepdog from Ringwood in Hampshire. And uh, Dalton trained Costa himself on the GB squad, these two. But just to explain to you, when you see the graphics come up on the screen, you're seeing the dog's kennel club name, and that is the full kennel club name. And then we're also giving you uh, their, their ordinary name, their pet name, and this time it's Costa. Neon Oxide is the registered name for Costa. Five volts picked up on route. Up and down over the A frame and uh, good time. 34.5 for Dalton uh, and for Costa. Seventh place for them. Yeah, really good time. Unfortunately, just uh, slightly getting in the dog's way. The dog mistiming its jump and down it goes. Watch, watch this one. You're looking at Spring, seven-year-old Border Collie, and Martin Reed, very, very highly rated dog. This one, Graham. Yes, uh, I can't believe this dog's seven already. He seems to have been around for a very long time, but this is a class partnership, I think is the way to call it. 
been very successful uh, domestically and internationally, and you can see why. But just keep an eye on Martin here, the way that he's always there for his dog. He always tries to stay in front of it because the dog can see him better. Look at him, looking back at it, making sure he gets it, pointing. The only thing he can't do is touch the dog, but he can use body language, and voice, everything else, trying to get this last bit of speed out, but just having an eye to make sure he keeps a clear round because he wants to get in the final. And what a fantastic round this is building up. 34 seconds dead. 34 seconds dead then, and at the moment, Martin Reed occupies the top two places. Crazy four-year-old border collie, Ewan Patterson from north of the border. Big support from Scotland here, as always, Crazy, member of Team GB and Team Scotland. First place for Crazy in the agility round at the World Championships last year. And definitely one to watch. Neat on the seesaw, good contact. Low centre of gravity and very, very quick. Good and clear, 15 seconds gone. That is so fast. Oh, can't get over that. Absolutely top gear over there. Oh, this is lovely. Through the, through the weaves as well. Tight turn for the finish. This is excellent. Up and down over the A-frame. This will threaten the best. 33.2. Fantastic. Ewan Patterson and Crazy. North of the border, number one. And you've written on your, on your card here, one to watch. To win the individual section of the agility at the World Championships is just phenomenal, and now you can see why. Brilliant. Here's the Malinois, Dora, age four. Jessica Clearhue from Leeds, fourth dog to compete at Crufts, but it is Dora's first time. Dora, the debutante, then on the green carpet and doesn't look too overawed by it at all. Barking and ready to go, the Malinois. Come on, let's get going then. Off we go. Good speed at the start. Good stuff over the seesaw as well. That's caused them one or two problems and it's caused the Dora problems as well. Might just get Graham to explain why so many dogs are having trouble with that obstacle at, at, the, at the end of this round. That That's good contact at the end of the dog walk. Good through the tunnel, swerved right, had to go left, that'll be precious, precious time, dropped. And again, a little bit of hesitation there, and the more faults picked up too. A-frame and the finish, time respectable, ten faults picked up on the way. OK, I just want to take a second to talk about uh, the problems that are occurring here. You see that she's trying to get on the left of that long jump and the dogs are having to come around her and not getting a clean entry onto it, so they're not getting a full stride. Um, so hopefully people will watch and learn from these mistakes which are happening there. Geek, seven-year-old border collie, Dan Shaw from Oxford, penultimate large dog. Team bronze at the Worlds last year, team silver at the Europeans, a big, big contender this afternoon. Excellent synchronization between handler and dog, Dan and Geek there. Nice crowd, they realize they could be seeing something special in this round. Now, great contact in the dog walk. Some others have gone quicker, but it's accurate and fast and right up there with the clock as well. Will, will uh, Geek slow in the weeds? No, Geek will not. Tight finish, it's gonna be very close to the best, up and down over the A-frame. Gotta be a, oh no, oh no. Just unraveled at the end, Graham. Well, yep, he did, uh, and this is a this is a really nice. But this this is deliberate because he knows he's going through to the final, and he wants his dog to go right to the bottom in the final. So he knew he'd done enough to get there. Okay. Last large dog, Dave Munnings and Fame, been an amazing dog. This one, and this is going to be. One of her last years at Crufts, eight years of age, Fame and Dave Munnings. Missed the contact at the end of the dog walk. Been a really good dog uh, over, the, over the years. Fine finish. 
just the five faults picked up and into the uh, 32s no one has been uh, that so quick but picking up the five faults today as Dave Munnings and that puts him in eighth place so our intrepid ring crew all volunteers here's the results then we have seen so a fine win for north of the border for Ewan uh, Patterson, you know, Martin Reed, and Spring getting a second and third place. What a tournament uh, Martin Reed is having at the moment and just ticking through. But of course, uh, these, uh, these are all going to be added together, of course, and we'll have the climax of this competition later today. Two alterations to the course as we anticipate the ten small dogs, first of ten small dogs in that uh, large section. We've just seen the top eight we would expect to go through and see again tonight. Plus the winners if they're not in the combined, don't qualify through the combined scores. So uh, they've altered the jumps and now set it at 35 centimetres. Uh, as from next year, the smalls will be jumping 30, so they'll be jumping five centimetres less from next year. This is Raid, working Cocker Spaniel, five years of age. Selena Bray from Hinkley. Pet first and very much loved, cuddly, soft, quiet dog. And the first of ten small dogs oh, a little bit uh, wide there but it's okay very nice round this a little bit of distance hand in there from Selena again just to make sure that she's in front of the dog trusting the dog now to get that A frame and it did a little bit of hesitation oh and I think that was just because she was lagging behind just a little bit at that point. We don't often see that one. The very last obstacle, the, the Kennel Club obstacle, run after that A-frame. Job done. Not quite. Sum up, six-year-old uh, Collie Cross Papillon, Dawn Weaver. Described as wild, fast, and crazy. Got a real wild streak in her as summer. But a very quick start. Lovely over that seesaw. And the spread too. Now this really flying on sadly. Oh, sadly it's a wrong course and it's elimination. Well, wild, crazy, fast. We told you. Yeah, and it just the dog just started to get away from her just a little bit there, and uh, and that's because it is wild and crazy, um, and that unfortunately it just got a bit wide on that jump and came at it from the wrong direction. Still a class act though. Sad. Uh, there we go. She just drifts across the face of the jump, which takes the dog across with it, and then uh, it goes across the other one. And then you see the crossed arms from the judge signalling an elimination. Hiccup, seven-year-old working copper from Crowborough, Sarah Roots, the handler. Ready to go, and off goes Hiccup. No, that contact there no it wasn't so there's uh, there's five faults at the end of the seesaw knocked off to the right hand side swiftly through the tunnel and good contact this time at the end of the dog walk plenty of noise <laughs> 
Oh, hiccup so far. One or two barks, though. <laughs> if you're going to do it, let everyone know you're yeah, out you the right well. well, one in a bit of praise there, and that's elimination, unfortunately, taking the wrong course, going back over that jump. But hiccups had a, hiccup has had an absolute ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Get that camera out of my face. <laughs> So unfortunately, pick enough an elimination for taking the obstacle from the wrong direction. And now we're just going to get rid of that cameraman. Yeah, go away. <laughs> this is Ty Shetland Sheepdog, Chloe Brown from Cornwall. What's this, one of your noisy neighbours, isn't it, Graham? It is. Uh, great partnership, this. I've been threatened with an inch of my life not to say anything nasty, but I never do that anyway. But uh, th this pair are a class act. They're still fairly young in... Uh, their international career, but uh, I don't think that's going to last for long. They made uh, the uh, British teams last year, and uh, for the first year they did an absolutely fantastic job, and you can see why. Again, Chloe making sure that she's in uh, exactly the right spot. A little bit of a spin, but it was far enough away from the weaves not to attract a fault, and now she has come out of the, the weaving pole at number 11, so that's five faults. They must be completed correctly, and again, but you're only faulted once in the middle of the weaves, so only five faults still. And now she's just lost some momentum, and unfortunately, once it starts to go wrong, it quite often continues to go wrong. Uh, but no, uh, won't be the last we see of Chloe. Well done, great effort. Chloe will still be talking to you after that, Graham. You're very, very kind. Don't worry about it. Sad elimination for Graham's neighbour. Alan Bray, daughter Selena, also competing. Tequita, four-year-old working cocker spaniel, off they go on the GB squad. These two, hugely experienced uh, Alan Bray. Oh dear. Five faults collected there. Lovely image that going over the dog walk. The skimming through the tunnel. Picking up a lot of speed in the second half of this course. Still just the five faults. How about now uh, over that uh, A point? Finishing over the Gunner Club leap. 40 seconds uh, for Alan Gray. And up into second place with that one, Graham. Very nice round. And I think Alan just thought that the dog was going to do it and started to drift to the left and the dog saw him and came with him, but such a shame. Great round. This is uh, Sunflower, mini American Shepherd, five years of age. Tony Dawkins is the hand that could be a partnership to watch. This one as well. We have not yet had a clear round. Oh, you little tinker. Oh, dear. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, little tinker sums it up, really. I think that's what she said as well, I think. I'm but, sure um, it was, Graham. I'm sure it was. Um, but, uh, well, so much promise. And as we said, uh, one to watch. Well, we, we watched the little tinker, Sunflower, and uh, doing very much her own thing. There we go. Didn't go right on this particular day, but uh, still a great experience. And there we go. You can see the right hand out. She sent it, and it kept going, unfortunately. And that's the dreaded elimination sign. Cherry, seven years of age, and Dawn Weaver from Portland in Dorset. Lively, cuddly dog. Can be very loud at times. And still, we do not have... A clear round. We have uh, four eliminations and the couple with uh, five penalty points. So clear and quick, and you're in great shape in this uh, particular competition. That's good. Has to be contact at the end of that seesaw. Nicely over the spread, too. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Wow. I'm, I'm struggling because this is this is a lovely course and I'm struggling to get my head round why we're having quite so many faults uh, on it. Um, there have been a few unlucky fives with some poles down, you always get those, but to, to pick up the number of eliminations on this course um, is really surprising. But you get courses like that, but uh, um, such a shame, well done, Paul. 
all the competitors watch outside, Grant. Does this weigh on their minds, all these eliminations? I think it probably worries them a bit more and it probably just makes them overcautious. And then when you become overcautious, it goes wrong as well. So it's a, it's a horrible circle, really. This is Tara, three-year-old Papillon and Nina Rajala. Achieved so much, just th over three kilos and only three years of age. Absolute dream come true to compete at Crufts. They will hope for a speedy, clear round. Good start. Goodness me. What's occurring out there, Graham? I'm going home. <laughs> What's occurring? I'm putting the microphone down and I'm going home. This is really strange. So uh, we have yet another elimination. The sixth elimination in eight small dogs that we have seen thus far. And, and we've already seen um, other hikes go over this same course without any issues. And you'd think that being smaller, shorter striding, it, it wouldn't become quite so difficult. And the person who's scratching his head the most out there is Martin Gavilla Judge. Who set the course, of course. Yep. Yep. Penultimate small dog, Blink, Lauren Langman. The competition is open for these two. Fourth overall at the World Championships by just one one hundredth of a second. Blink, a great favourite in recent years. So quick. And now looking to be quick, precise, accurate and not to pick up any faults at all. Great stuff over the dog walk. Are we seeing the winning round here with Blink and Lauren Langman? So quickly into the weeds as well. It's a great time, spectacular time this. Twisting for home now, a couple to go. A little stumble, oh my goodness me. Oh Blink, what are you doing? What are you doing? Going through the tunnel instead. Blink, would you believe it, a world championship contender. <laughs> Graham Partridge has left the building, by the way. You cannot believe what we have seen here. Right at the end, the competition was there. And Blink eliminated. Oh I'm back. <laughs> Last small dog, Dave Munnings with Boost. Five-year-old Cross Corbin. One small Olympia title, three years in a row. Um, it crashes down. We're getting used to seeing this now. The thing is, these handlers and these dogs are such high quality, and we've seen an absolute catalogue of errors here in the small section of the Crofts singles. We really have the agility. Well, a very strange competition, and uh, the top three both picking up those five points, five uh, faults. Dave Munnings and Boost, number one. Selena Bray and Raid, number two. And Alan Bray, Selena's dad, in third place. Strange competition, all those eliminations.
first of 10 medium dogs to go. Gift, six-year-old Border Collie, and Shannon Springford, represented Britain, the Europeans, and the Worlds, and in this year's squad as well. Let's see how these medium dogs cope with a course that was so problematical for these small dogs. This is good, it's clear and quick for Shannon and for Gift. Dog walk is good contact at the end, all clear so far. Tunnel in and out in a flash, Weeds entering from the right side. Now we're in business, turning towards us now. Tight left hander, a couple to go. The A frame is up and down and good, and over the Kennel Club too. 34 and clear for Shannon and Gift. Easy peasy. Great run there by Sharon. Nicely made, A frame. And then, oh, it was a close one. Next to go, Nikki and Moody, Hungarian extraction. Five years of age, Liesl Plecker from Rugby in Warwickshire, the handler. Feisty little dog, this one. Eliminated straight away, wrong course. This uh, particular ailment seems to be spreading in these parts. Yeah, it's the first one we've actually seen go uh, go seesaw into the tunnel. Um, and we'll take another look at that in just a minute. But uh, it's, uh, this is, again, is a, you know, it's a fairly inexperienced dog. Uh, as you say, we don't see many Hungarian moodies. They're becoming a little bit more popular now. But you can see why they're, they're a great working dog. They want to get on with it. Very agile and suited, ideally, for agility. And just taking the wrong course very early on in the piece as well means elimination for Nikki, the Hungarian Moody. Rebecca Sargent, the handler here, Team GB assistant manager. Dolly Collie, 11-year-old Border Collie, last time on the green carpet. Could be a very emotional round this one it will be uh, Dolly's been an absolutely fantastic dog uh, for Rebecca um, she's had some great successes with it over the years and, and I know there will be uh, a tear or two shed um, she's had the long jump down well I don't think she'll be too bothered about that she's got very realistic expectations she's just absolutely so pleased that this dog is fit and healthy still doing agility at uh, 11 years of age and that's what it does it does keep your dog fit and healthy but this is a great exhibition into those weaves come on becky just keep it going now just two or three more to go calls the dog gets on the correct side up oh get over that a-frame refusal there but that's okay one more to go great round of applause there from becky sergeant and the fantastic dolly collie well on to becky sergeant little refusal at the end collecting uh, those uh, 10 points in addition to clipping the long jump. Second dog for Joe Gleed, our expectant mum, Edge, four-year-old Cocker Spaniel, second time at Crufts for Edge. Cheeky and naughty and a great personality. That's very fast to get to know. Not good enough then over the seesaw. Five faults there. Pushing edge towards the tunnel. Great speed over the dog walk. Great contact to tight left hand turn at the top of the course. Oh, really flying here is edge. Great speed, just the five faults on the clock as well. Haven't seen much quicker than this. Turning for home now. Up and down. A frame is great at the end. Hops over the kennel club to 35. Seconds then for, for Joe and for Edge, second place at the moment. Yep, well done, great effort there from Joe. Uh, as I say, just to get round the course uh, in eight months, absolutely fantastic and good luck. Izzy, Border Collie, Cross, Miniature Poodle, five years of age. Hannah Thorpe is the hand and they are underway. First time qualified for the British Open and singles, very excited. Hannah has come up through the juniors. And now the senior Great Britain squad as well. Very, very promising handler. Very close contact uh, with the dog here. Great partnership this is developing. 16 seconds clear at the moment. Well done, Hannah, and well done, Izzy, as well. Dog walk is good. Just clipped that uh, fence, stayed intact, though. So fast through the tunnel. 
and Louise. This is really good. Just a bit of hesitation, but turning now. The A-frame ahead of her. The A-frame ahead. And up up over the last one as well. Clear. 36.6 for Hannah and for Izzy. Second place as it stands. Well done, Hannah. Very, very nice round here. Beautifully handled. Uh, kept your composure, your concentration. Um, and hopefully that's going to put you into the final. Munchie, Border Collie, aged four, Dalton Meredith from Ringwood, our dog trainer. Munchie looking to get into the 34, 35 second region and to keep it clear. Certainly got the speed to get into that sort of uh, time frame. Just can he keep it together here? Everything's it's happening so quickly on this course. Barking his enjoyment all the way around. This is where they've got the cross behind the weaves. It's the dog enter. They must come out on the left. There we go. Very nicely done. Sharp call before the dog goes over the jump. One more jump. A frame. Up and over. And last one. Oh, 32, 836. Fantastic. Great effort there from Dalton. Terrific work from Dalton and from Munchie. 32.8 and clear means rank one. Liz Carpenter and Winnie Colly Cross Poodle, four years of age. Eliminated first Crufts and um, eliminated straight away. And a little, just a little stumble there for Winnie, Winnie as well. It might have been a late entry this one, Graham. Yeah. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, one of the dogs had to pull out, um, and so Liz was offered the opportunity and took it, almost bit the person's hand off. As you to, would, to by get the way. Here. You would. So I think she's just enjoying the experience. Who, who Everyone wants to run on this fantastic green carpet here at the Biggest and Best Dog Show. So well done, Liz, and thanks for coming. Just uh, the elimination very early, very early on in the round. Very unusual. You rarely see a dog. That's not the next obstacle, the dog walk. Even, and even though it hasn't made an attempt to go on it, it's run under it, so that's classed as wrong course. Eliza, six-year-old bearded collie, and we're looking at Ashley Butler, serial winner here at Crufts, high-profile handler. Running her mum's dog as well, I think, here, Graham. Yep, um, very, very bad year for Ashley. Uh, unfortunately, lost her mother last year. Uh, she was her constant companion. She's her dog, so I know this round will be for her. And I'm getting a bit emotional as well. I'll pick it up from here then. It's a good start, good first 20 seconds. Nice clean contact at the end of the dog wall. Just to remind if you're not to watch before, you have to go into those weaves on the right hand side. Very good, Ashley uh, and Eliza. Tremendous. So good. 35.2 and clear for Ashley up into third place Ashley and Eliza fantastic mixed emotions I'm sure there for Ashley but uh, great effort well done Ashley mum would have been very proud she would definitely penultimate medium dog Vegas and Dawn Weaver six-year-old Collie Cross Papillon won the medium individual title at Olympia two years running 2018 and 2019 so these two have the pedigree Dear. Vegas just dropping, almost carelessly dropping points there. It's a quick dog though. Up that top end of the course, and racing in and out of the tunnel. Slight hesitation. Weaves are good. Great style. Get a tight left hand turn. Heading towards the A frame. This is a very, very respectable time as well. 34.6, just those five boards for Dawn as well. Fifth place. Yeah, unfortunately, as you say, Dawn just decided to cross behind the dog walk, uh, the, the long jump there, and the dog just turning the wrong direction and just dropping its leg. So unlucky. Already had the jumping this morning. You're looking at the, the winner at uh, Indy and Natasha Chambers. Last to go. And the 
away we go. In great form. Winners this morning round it combined scores and we have a grand finale later this afternoon. Oh goodness me, that wobbled that old long jump, didn't it? Really wobbled. So all good so far for Natasha. And the clock is right up there too. With Indy. Tight turn, a couple of very quick steps into the tunnel. Where do I go now? You head for the weaves, that's where you go. This is really going to be close. It's going to be up there in the shake-up for sure. 35.9 uh, for Natasha. Up into the top four. Really great effort there. Double footing through the weaves. Presentation this afternoon, we have Mr. Ian Seath, a member of the Kennel Club board. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Seath, for here, Ian. Presenting the we first of all with a small rosettes and trophies is Mr. Ian Seath, Kennel Club spike. board Day member, running. accompanied by Martin Cavill. And the winner of the smalls <laughs> is Dave Munnings and Boost Bite. Second place <laughs> is <laughs> Selena Bray. <laughs> And she's beaten her father, Alan Bray, who's in third place. So well done to them. Moving on now to the medium. The winner of the medium with Croft Singles Agility was Dalton Meredith with Munchie. Or Agility Champion Fan Dabby Dozy Munchikin Jai. Shannon Springford was second with Gift the Border Collie and in third place is Ashley Butler with Eliza and a very popular winner of the large was Ewan Patterson with Crazy the Border Collie Martin Reed is second with Spring and Martin Reed getting a, a double bite of the cherry also third place with his young dog three-year-old border collie called snooze so second and third for martin reed now they go there on a well-deserved lap of honor there we are dave mullings with boost bike that's a rescue dog another great advert for taking on rescue dogs been very difficult dog to live with he says and very difficult to train but look at this winner of the cross singles at cross Great competition, 